One of the many beautiful sights on the grounds of the United States Air Force Academy. It is a beautiful evening outside. We're going to be inside. Hayden Graham and the Air Force Falcons getting ready to take on the Utah State Aggies in a Mountain West Conference showdown. And an official welcome inside Clune Arena, everybody. Glad, as always, that you're along with us with Seth Bonner. I'm Drew Goodman. It's nitty-gritty time. Just a couple of games left in the conference season. Time to get ready for the postseason, and you want to have momentum, naturally. Absolutely, Uncle Momentum can, can thrust you through the playoffs and get you into that tournament and win some games and possibly win it. Who knows what can happen? Everybody's got a shot. You want to go in playing well. Yeah, we keep saying it is wide open in the Mountain West Conference and the tournament is not that far away. How about the Falcons at Clune Arena? They've been on some kind of roll. They're 12 and four overall this year, but they've been knocking off some heavyweights of late. They really have. They've done a nice job in this building getting right, playing together, playing physical, knocking off Y.O. first of that four game streak. These guys played physical, they played aggressive on defense. Who was next? Oh, Boise State, another heavy hitter in the conference. Took care of Boise State at home, got the huge win, and then UNLV, they revenged a 36 point throbbing and a 29 point throbbing from New Mexico and the next two, these guys have been great in this arena. Yeah, it gets your attention. When you lose by 36 and 29, and then you come back and defeat those teams, tells you something about the cadets, and they really are confident here at Clune Arena. They're taking on a Utah State team that is also playing pretty well. They're coming off an 18-point win against San Jose. Christmas terrific, isn't he? He really is. He has all the skills to pay the bills. This guy's inside, outside. You see with the great touch from beyond the arc, this guy can get a shot in a bunch of different ways. You can't just fly out on him because then he'll blow by you and get to the rim and put points in there. Oh, well, by the way, he can post you up as well and play big man for the guard down low. Averages 14 a game, had 19 against the academy last time out. Yeah, he's one of the most gifted players in the conference. They'll rely heavily on him this evening. We're ready to go. Utah State on the road taking on the Falcons of Air Force. It should be very enjoyable. We'll get it up in the year next. Come on back to Colorado Springs with us. Welcome back to Colorado Springs. Mountain West Conference basketball. Air Force getting ready to take on Utah State. The penultimate game of the regular season. Final road game for Utah State. And let's take a look at uh, Tim Duryea, the head coach for the Aggies. He's in his first year, but he's been with the program forever, 15 years with the Aggies, 14 years, the assistant, uh, top assistant to Stu Morrow. Take a look at the Aggies' offense or starting lineup, we should say. I'm in football mode. Look at their <laughs> offense and their defense. They got to play both here. <laughs> Jalen Moore, another guy they rely heavily on. Lou Evans is giving them uh, good time. Darius Perkins making his 59th consecutive start. Air Force will line up in the following manner. C.J. Seifel, Zach Coker, Jacob Van, Hayden Graham, and the lone senior, Zach War, who's been coming off the bench. Dave Pilipovich put him back in the starting lineup, his final home game as a member of the academy. It's a good problem to have to go to a 6'10 guy that can score on the block and just toss him in the game. Let him start. In the all-blue uniforms, Utah State with the basketball, Darius Perkins up top. Both of these teams are, are somewhat methodical offensively. They really share the ball well, both schools. And good ball movement. Perkins can shoot the three and no go. And it comes to Quinn Taylor, and he hands it right to Jacob Van. So a quick turnover by Utah State after getting that Got a good of rebound. Got a good shot there, Drew. Just wasn't able to knock it down. Here's Coker. He's been shooting it very well. And this was a matchup that concerned Coach Duryea because Chris Smith 
whenever you have to cover an Air Force player, it's not 15 seconds. You're going to have to cover them for 27, 28, and all the back cuts and all the movement and all the screens. And not just any player. You're talking about Zach Coker, who's going to attack the glass as well. He's got to be on point in his game, talking about Chris Smith. Smith drives, and uh, Moore gets the layup on the follow. And our first points of the game, Jalen Moore averages almost 15 a night, the junior from Logan, Utah. Great rebound. Well above the rim. Now watch Hayden Graham. Here he makes a nice move to the hole. That's a great side because the last two days, he has been in the clinic getting IVs. He's been very sick and under the weather. And we chatted with him briefly during pregame, asked him how he felt, and he said, not real well. Although anytime you've got to get IVs, it's going to take something out of you. You've lost a ton of fluids. Dehydrated, he's probably lost some weight. Outside of Moore, who can shoot the three. And it's tapped at by Taylor. It comes away to number five, Zach Coker. Two apiece early. Van walked. And that's two quick turnovers on Air Force. It's a good call. He had the... The right play in mind with the curl there. The lane was wide open, but hesitated for a second. Lost his dribble. Two minutes in, here's Perkins. He's a senior from Fort Myers, Florida. Good ball movement, Chris Smith, who gets great elevation on his jumper. Cashes the three-pointer, his 53rd of the year. That's just a, a lack of knowing where, where the main shooter is. You can't allow him to get that open look. Hayden Graham off the bounce. Well, you know what? The IVs are paying off because he's two for two. A nice move to the bucket, and he hit his jumper. Listen, there's been some terrific performances when, when guys have been sick, hurt, they found a way to come out and play. Lou Evans from the perimeter. Zach Coker, who always does a great job on the defensive glass terminates that possession. Now Coker in open three. That's one that he had been knocking down of late. And Van running with Siples. And Van will lay it up and in. Nicely done as he beat Chris Smith. Smart play by Chris Smith. Not to pick up his second foul on the run out there. 6-5 Air Force. Taylor, number 22, has been starting quite a bit the last few weeks. Doing a nice job. Another shot for Moore. This three-pointer goes down. And Jalen Moore with his 41st triple of the year. He's one of the better three-point shooting teams in the conference. And there's a takeaway by Quinn Taylor. Denying that pass on the block. Lou Evans, and they're getting happy from three-point range. And taking quick shots for this team. I mean, talk about wanting to be patient, run the offense, but getting some terrific looks. The three of six from downtown early. And Van had that, I think, uh, partially blocked. Jones got to expand a little bit. It's going to open up some lanes. And that shot way off the mark by Evans. Here comes C.J. Siples. He had a little bit of an opening. The trailer's Graham. That is a three if it goes, and it rolls out. Looked extremely aggressive for a guy that was getting fluids early on in this game. Basically what Dredden does. I mean, absolutely, especially and, and being young. <laughs> Young helps, too. <laughs> Perkins drives on the baseline. And we have a foul. Utah. Mountain West basketball on Route Sports is brought to you by Office Liquidators. OfficeLiquidators.com has Colorado's lowest prices and largest selection of new used and refurbished office furniture. And by Steel, for people everywhere who refuse to compromise, find yours at SteelDealers.com. Inside Clune Arena, Jalen Moore and Utah State off to a fine start. They're up five with Seth Bonner on Drew Goodman. Jalen Moore had 20 in his first matchup of the year 
against Air Force. That was a game in Logan, Utah, and it turned into a very convincing win for Utah State. 17th meeting all time, and Utah State has won 13 of the, seven, of the uh, 16 previous meetings. Though Air Force won for the first time. They played in uh, 64, and that was a one-point victory for the Falcons here at the Academy. Talk about Jalen Moore and his, his 20 points. He also had six rebounds, six assists. Good defense by Hayden Grant. So he's doing a little everything early despite being under the weather. You don't have to be great. You just got to be ready to play. And he looks like he's extremely ready to play. Zach Moore fires a three. And on <laughs> senior day, he knocks it down in front of mom and dad. Just his ninth three-pointer of the year. And that was much needed. It makes it a two-point game. Air Force throwing a zone out right now. They've extended it a bit. They were waiting back around the free throw line earlier on in the zone, but now they've extended it. Perkins long on the jumper. Quinn Taylor, another offensive rebound. Smith says, thank you. I'll fire that. Gets that Vinny Johnson elevation on his jump shot, man. He gets up there. Yeah, you know, some guys they call it a jumper and it's more of a set shot, but his make no mistake. He does get elevation. Morrissey, I'm gonna try again. And Cyples comes away. He's gonna wait for teammates. Ooh, that was from the bag of tricks we haven't seen. <laughs> Coker on a post up. Jump hook. And a little jump hook, huh? <laughs> 13 38 to go in the first half. Gotta use all the tools in your box. Good ball movement. And an air ball by Julian Perry who just came on the floor. Jacob Van who shoots it off his shoulder, but it goes in a lot. It's one of those ugly looking jumpers that does go in. Talked about Hayden Graham and his 21 points in the second half. He had 22 in that win over New Mexico the last time on this floor. But good sharing the ball by Zach Coker and another wide open look. And there's so many shooters on the floor. It, it just seems like you can't get a guy to the next guy. It takes so much energy to get to the guy. Don't you get the feeling that Air Force could, they could put blindfolds. They pull up Povich could put blindfolds on his guys and they know where everybody is anyhow. Uh, yes. Yes, they're very organized. <laughs> and and in this building, it's even they're, they're, it's even a heightened sense yeah. of awareness for some reason. You know, we talked to Dave earlier today and asked uh, Coach why he feels everybody plays better at home. We get that. There's, it's your, your building, you're familiar with it, you know, the energy of your crowd, et cetera. But, but why he felt so much so that they played better at home, that they rebounded much better at home. And he had, a, he had an interesting answer. He said, our guys are so used to being regimented in the routine here on game day. I mean, they know every minute of the day is, is spelled out. He goes, I think it's a comfort area for them. And, and that's what I, that, that was my opinion. Being on the road, you get up when you want, you go to sleep when you want. That's a little different. Nobody's. The, the alarm's not ringing at 6 a.m., right? No, but you don't have to do roll call, none of that stuff. And uh, Zelston Jones just knocks one down from point blank range. Don't have, you don't have to make your bet in the hotel either, do you? Here's no, Van. somebody's doing it for you. <laughs> here's, here's, that's why I love hotels. Uh, Van misses from three point range. 13 12 Aggies after the Zelston Jones lay in. Whoa. Moore went flying. Zach Coker. Zach just got trucked on the play before. And being that physical player that he is, he, he wanted a little get back. But this was a great route out. I mean, he just drove. Shane Rector's on the floor, number four. Moore, good pass down low to Jones. And he throws up an air ball for point blank range. And Zach Coker pulls away the rebound. Reverse layup for Van. Jacob Van with seven quick points, averaging almost 18 a game his last four. He's just that guy. I want to call him Jimmy Chitwood. He just kind of makes it happen, finds a way to get a shot up. They haven't run the picket fence for him yet, though. Nope. There's a steal. Van to Siples on the run out. And Air Force has a 16-13 advantage. First hoop for Siples, sophomore from Cibolo, Texas.
Jalen Moore off a down screen misses. They're now one for their last eight after starting hot. They'll get a bonus possession. Nothing going to the rim. Everything's a three. And the rebound to Frank Tui. Now that's one for their last nine. Kyle Brookheis in for Air Force. Got over the walk there. Well, you, you said they're shooting a lot of threes. How about this set? 13 of their 17 field goal attempts are threes. I mean, there's nothing going to the rim. And you're, you're, unless you're hitting, you're not going to have success that way. You can't. That's, that sounds a lot like Colorado State, doesn't it? Really it really does. Oh, a little okie doke move from Frank Tui. Frank Tui with the step through. The good footwork. And all he does is make positive plays. Not going to wow you with his size or his speed, but has an understanding for what he's doing on the block. Puts some points on the board. You know, the other thing with, with the defense Air Force is playing, they're forcing a lot of these shots. They're not allowing a lot of penetration like that. Now, Rector going to the hoop with a floater, and that ends the run for Air Force. Also snaps a, a one for nine skid for Utah State, 18-15, about halfway home here in the first half from Clune Arena in Colorado Springs. Coker, and he's short on that. You were, you could tell from uh, where we're seated. As soon as he left his hand. Oh, good rip by Van. Tell you what, this kid just makes plays. Air Force has forced five turnovers. Coker trying again from that same spot. Brookheis tried to keep it alive. Jones comes away for Utah State. Didn't like that shot much by Zach Coker. Got to be a little more patient. Outside for Perry. And Lou Evans had it rejected. Jones comes up with it. And a foul. That would be Walt Weiss. And there's Jordan Lyles. Spring is not just around the corner, it's arrived. And that could mean one thing. Rockies baseball's back. Root Sports will bring you six spring training games live from Scottsdale, Arizona, beginning March 14th as the Rockies take on the Seattle Mariners. Root Sports, your home for Rockies baseball all year long. 18-15, Air Force by three. Uh, those gentlemen, I, I don't think I don't think they were born with uh, that hair. It's possible nowadays. It, it, hair, hair dye, color. Okay. I mean, however, it looked a little fake to me. So you and I are follicle challenged, so. <laughs> yeah, I don't even talk about long hair anymore. Utah State with the basketball. They hoisted 20 shots, four more than Air Force, except they're just six of 20. Air Force, eight of 16 in the early going. 14 now, the 20 shots for the Aggies have been threes. They've also turned it over five times, six and times. Six times, here's a three on one. Leave it for Siples, and he'll elevate and lay it in. Jacob Van has played a complete game so far through the first 11 plus minutes. He really is Jimmy Chitwood. Telling you, they don't need to run the pick fence. Way outside for Rector. Chris Smith. Kind of bulls his way in, literally cleared some space with Frank Tui there. And Chris Smith with his second hoop, he's got five. Air Force with eight fast break points. They go inside to Tui, and he'll get a couple of free throws. The outside official, Randy McCall, making the call. He's just so crafty on the block. Knows he can't out jump you, he's patient. Again, uses good footwork with the pump fake. Gets good free throw shooter, too. Been pretty solid. 78% over his last eight games. That's where he is. Went from not getting many minutes at all to being a, a big minute guy for Dave Pilipovich. Jalen Moore had a brief break. He comes back on the floor. Lou Evans goes out. The starting lineup the last nine games, eight games, two hits. I mean, he's been incredible. And Tui gets them both. Get 
Again, the ball movement has been great for Utah State. And they find their go-to guy, Chris Smith. He bangs another three-pointer. Second of the night. So eight points for Smith. 22-20. You've got to know who the shooters are. And he, and he is definitely a guy you cannot give an open look to. Danny Hummers come on the floor for Air Force. Coker gets fouled. That's tough. This is a tough call because this is good defense. See this great jumper right here by the star himself. Knocks it down from downtown. Chris Smith. Welcome back to Air Force Academy. The Air Force up 22 to 20. And I tell you what, there's some great defense being played right here. This is a tough call here on Julian Perry. He's in good position. He's backing away. Watch this look here. You see Coker's elbow come out. Very tough call to swallow if you're Utah State. Coach Durier got off the pinch and was upset. Very tough way to pick up a foul. There's Jacob Van. All he's done so far is score seven points. He has a couple of assists, and he has five steals. He had nine coming into the game. The school record, seven. Tim Anderson, 2008. Happened uh, a couple years ago, Max Yon, 2013, Chris Carter as well in 2011. High arcing jumper, nothing but the cords for Hayden Graham, who's got such a pretty stroke. Yep. Six for Graham, 24-20 Falcons. That elbow shot, he'll hit 95% of those, 90% of those shots. Anytime he puts it up, you can pretty much count it. You can't leave him there. It does seem that way. Smith shakes free, pulls up from 16. Mid-range jumper's good for Smith, the senior from Sacramento. He has started every game in his career at Utah State. Transferred from uh, Yuba Junior College. He's that guy that Coach Duryea wants to take over. He wants him to be in control. This is his team. He's the best player on this team. Desmond James out there. Desmond lost the basketball, got it back, and Jalen Moore affected the shot and then pulled away the rebound. They're extremely active in the zone, getting out to the elbows, taking away the threes. That's why you're seeing so many shots beyond the arc for Utah State. Perkins, another three, good box out by Zach Moore, and that foul on Jalen Moore. He was over the uh, back. James, after a couple of minutes, he goes out. C.J. Siples comes back in. Dave Pilipovic's done such a marvelous job this year. They lose Ryan Manning really early. He was a starter, out for the year. And then they lose their leading scorer when Trevor Lyons went down. Trevor had to have surgery on his hand. Yet, it doesn't matter who he puts on the floor. Here's Zach Moore taking advantage of Utah State giving it away. But no matter who they put on the floor, a two he steps up. A CJ Cycles has stepped up. Jacob Van has really stepped up. Big time. And even Louder stepped up for a few weeks for him. Yep. And they've had guys come off the bench. There weren't guys you were counting on, but you see the good drop step. I think he gets fouled there, stands there to complain, and guess what? The ball bounced right back to him. I guess the ball don't lie. That's what they say at the gym, right? That is what they say at the gym. And he, on a close call, there's uh, Trevor Lyons. Sophomore. Shane Rector with the basketball. See, if you get the ball in that, that zone-busting position, high post, you have to turn and be a threat, don't you, Seth? Absolutely. you got to turn and be ready to shoot or penetrate the kick. That's why you see Hayden Graham is so effective in that area. Joe Tuss, quick shot. Perkins off to Taylor. Pretty layup. That's a tough layup. Quinn Taylor, redshirt freshman from Houston. His first career start came against Air Force. Yeah, they rebounds that night. Another big, good-sized kid. 
and athletic enough to get his own shot. Moore from the top of the key, no go. Well, Utah State, after being cold, they've hit five of their last six shots. They can take the lead again here. Rector looking for a call, and it goes out of bounds off of Quinn Taylor. Shane Rector looking in the direction of Kevin Brill saying, I didn't get hit. Listen, after the last layup by Quinn Taylor, it should tell you they're letting you play down low. You've got to adjust your game accordingly. for Moore. Seifel's guarded by Perkins. Shot clock at five, and Perkins watches as Seifel's knocks down a three right in front of him. Defense wasn't bad. Seven points for C.J. Seifel's. 29-26, Falcons. This gets better and better. Each time out, C.J. Seibel just gets better and better. Yep. Confident kid. Boy, Taylor had a shot, and now he ducks in. And fortunately for him, it was Chris Smith entering the paint and tapping it home. Smith with a dozen. Well, that's that shot you just spoke about, that free throw shot against the zone where it's expanded. You get in there, you got to be ready to turn and shoot. He just hit one a few minutes ago. Elected to try to go get closer to the rim. Air Force running the multitude of patterns in that offense. And the open man is tossed for three. Julian Perry pulls it away. Joe Toss has such a good looking shot. He just has not been able to get him to fall. There's another steal. Van ends up with the basketball. And then he loses it, hands it right back. And Moore on a run out will tuck it away. 2.55 to play, timeout on the floor. The Aggies with a 30-29 lead. It's been up and down the floor. Utah State leading by one in the middle of that huddle. Tim Duryea, remember when he was at Colorado State, assistant to Boyd Grant in the late 80s. And now the head man at Utah State joining a, an elite coaching fraternity in this conference. I've really been impressed with, you know, the kind of the brotherhood uh, that we have when we get together and just how friendly everybody is to each other and just a quality group of guys. It's you want to root for them and yet you know that on certain nights you have to root against them and it's really hard to know who to root for and who not to root for because they are really a quality group of guys. Quality group of guys and a collection of terrific coaches. You know, Tim Duryea got dealt a tough hand. They were picked third in the conference because of Chris Smith, Jalen Moore, and David Collette. And then the day before the season's going to begin, David Collette walked into Coach Duryea's office and told him he was going to transfer. There's that jumper from Hayden Graham, who's had a nice first half despite playing with an illness. 31-30 Air Force back on top. That's tough for Coach Tim uh, Duryea. That's tough for any coach, but uh, David Collette, one of the most athletic players at 6'10", Decided he wanted to go Pac-12, and I get that. I'm, I'm fine with that, but don't wait until the last minute to do it to the guys. Tough blow. Yep. Nine lead changes now as that jumper knocked down by Julian Perry. Tui. And that will count. There's your guy. I know you love him. I do, man. Frank Tui. For you Denverites, it reminds me of a big Dan Issel type. Not as big, but the guy just makes plays. And watch him get the defender on the hip and keep going. Gives him a little elbow, hooks him around, and but finishes. I mean, that's tough to defend when you get a bull moving around you. How about just being ready? to take advantage of an opportunity. We always talk about it in life, whatever it is, whether it's sports or business. Frank Tui averaging less than seven minutes a game, first 15 games. All of a sudden, his number gets called, injuries, changing up the lineup. He's averaging better than 24 minutes over his last seven. 
And he's producing. He's going to keep getting minutes. Absolutely. How can you not give the guy minutes when, when everything that he does has been positive for you? Final minute and a half of the first half. Out of the corner, Jalen Moore splashes a three. He's got ten. Really like his game. Six foot eight. Or six nine. Just a junior. He's already over a thousand career points. 33rd on the all-time list at Utah State. No ways to go to catch dad though. Here's Zach Moore. Or Zach uh, Coker, I should say. Boy, Moore's open again. They didn't find him, and he makes Air Force pay. He's feeling it. All the way down the court, asking for the ball. Perkins did a nice job of recognizing him being open and swinging it over quickly. I think Air Force wanted to go two for one. They still have an opportunity to, to go two for one. The Aggies have hit five straight from the floor. Van trying to find some help, and he turns it over. Here's Rector one on one with Siples to Moore and a hard foul from behind by Tui. He's going to make Moore earn it from the line. Air Force foul is called number two. And look at this fluid shot. Big six foot nine. Great swing by Perkins again. And look at that shot. Nice rotation. Again, Perkins on the assist. Bang, knocks it down. And for Utah State, this is, is, is great news. 14 to 3 when leading at the half on the season. Well, I'll tell you something else. Moore with 31 plus seconds left at the line. And he's got the first one down. That's the 39th point of the first half for the Aggies. Get this. When Utah State scores 40 or more in, in the first half, they're 8 0. And whether it's Air Force or Colorado State or Nevada or Fresno State, 40 is a big number to give up in a half. It really is, on your home floor as well. Now it's been Moore and Smith, Jalen with 15 points, a dozen for Chris Smith, 40-33, and now some pressure from Utah State. 25 seconds left. I think it's a good call by uh, Coach Duryea. Slow them down in their process of getting into their offense in the waning moments of the first half. Forces a late, a late shot. I don't want to call it desperation, but it forces a late shot. Shot clock down to six. Go. Desmond Gotta James, go. it's at four. And boy, that's not. Well, actually, you know what? They, they wanted had that foul. Give, they had one to give. Okay. I thought that was seven. It was not. It's six. So a good foul by Shane Rector. And now 4.5 to go in the half. Long three off the mark for Hayden Graham. So both teams had their moments, but it's Utah State finishing the first half with a flurry, an 8-0 run. And they'll take a seven-point lead to the locker room at Clune Arena. 40-33, Utah State on the road, leading against Air Force.